In this video, we're going to learn how to get the current working directory of a C program running on a Windows machine using the underscore get CWD function of the direct.h library. If we were using a Unix-like system, like a Linux machine or a Mac machine, we would probably use the POSIX library to achieve the same functionality. The first thing we'll do is include the direct.h library where the function is defined. Then down here, we'll define a buffer character array. This buffer character array is going to store the current working directory. And we've made our buffer 1,024 characters in length. So we'll be able to store paths up to 1,024 characters, including the special null terminator character that terminates a string in C. We'll call the function like this, underscore get CWD. We'll pass in buffer and the maximum size of a path that we can store in this buffer, which is going to be 1,024. So we'll save this. And then we'll print out the buffer after we run the function. So we'll say current working directory. We'll put a couple new lines in, a percent %s for the string, backslash n, and then we'll output the buffer. So we'll save this and run this, and we should get the current working directory of this program right now. And we'll get this as the current working directory. And that makes sense because this is a Visual Studio project, and that is the Visual Studio project path. So the function is working. Now, if there's a problem getting the current working directory, the function will return null, and we can check for that. We could say, if the function returns null, we'll output an error message. We could say, printf get current working directory failed, followed by a new line, and we'll also return one as an error status. One possible way that an error can occur is if the buffer is not large enough to store the actual current working directory path. So for example, if our buffer was only 20 characters in length, that would not be large enough to store that large path. So we'll save this and then compile it and run a program. And now we get get current working directory failed. So we can actually detect an error now. We can actually detect specifically what error occurred if we include the errno.h library. So this library includes a global variable called ERRNO, and the getCWD function will actually set the ERRNO global variable to a constant value that represents some specific type of error that has occurred. So this type of error is represented with a particular constant, and we can check for that. We'll say if ERRNO is equal to E range, this is the error that will occur if the buffer is not large enough. We'll print out path exceeds max buffer length, followed by a new line. And if we save this and then compile and run our program, we'll get get current working directory failed and path exceeds max buffer length. So we're able to identify and then handle the specific type of error that has occurred. Now we can actually use this function in a different way. Instead of passing in a pointer to a character here as our first argument, we can actually pass in null. If we do that, the function will behave differently. The function will actually dynamically allocate space to store the path itself. We would then have to free this space later. And the function will return a pointer to this dynamically allocated space. So we can make a character pointer here, ret, PTR, and we'll set it equal to the return value of calling the underscore get CWD function with null as our first argument. And for our second argument, the behavior here is also going to be different. So if we say 1024, what's going to happen is that a minimum of 1024 characters or bytes worth of space is going to be allocated to store the path string. If the path needs more than this length, then that space will be allocated. So this is sort of setting a minimum threshold for the number of characters or bytes to be allocated in memory to store the path. But if we need to exceed the minimum, that will be done. The function will allocate more space in this. So now we're gonna to check to see if the return pointer here is equal to null, because if it is, an error has occurred. And when we go to actually print out the string, instead of buffer, 
we're going to print out the string stored at this return pointer here. So we can save this and compile our program and run it. And it's going to work. We get the current working directory again, just in a different way. But because this is dynamically allocated memory, there's something important we need to do. We need to free the space that's been allocated. So after we're done working with this dynamically allocated memory, we should free that space because get CWD used malloc to actually allocate space on the heap. And we need to take responsibility for freeing that space. If we're going to use the free function to free the dynamically allocated memory, we do have to include the stdlib.h library where that function is defined. There's one more specific type of error we can check for as well. So in the case where we pass in null as the first argument to the underscore get CWD function, and we're allowing the function to dynamically allocate space for the path, it's possible that it will fail to dynamically allocate the space. And we can check for that error using another constant. We would check if ERRNO is equal to E no mem. And we can print out a relevant error message. So we could say memory cannot be allocated for path, followed by a new line. So we could also detect this error. This error is going to be pretty rare in practice though. So this is how we can use the underscore get CWD function in the direct.h library to find the current working directory of a C program running on a Windows machine. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.